in between my cozy silk sheets and my feather pillows I could hear a faint ring right next to my ears it was the alarm shit and the moment I opened my eyes I felt a sudden surge of emptiness uneasiness and extreme sadness I felt so worthless I hate waking up these days because over the past few days sleep has been my only refuge it has been the only moment through which I can run away from the sharpened claws of the truth. It's like I'm better off unconscious because at least then I'm not thinking of the mess that I'm in. I struggle to throw the sheets away. I need to get up. My feet touch the ground and I make my way to the bathroom. I leave the lights there on always. At least one part of my life should remain in the light. I run myself a warm bath and start off by brushing my teeth. I open the bin to dispose the empty shower gel bottle on my sink. And boy, did I regret that decision. From the bin was an awful stare coming from the white papers. They came from the hospital a few days ago. On them were huge letters written in red, screaming HIV positive. (laughs) Rage took over me. I threw the bottle in the bin. I'm staring at myself in the mirror now. All I see is dirt, and as usual, I drift off. He had such beautiful calling eyes. Honestly, he looked like a dream come true. And being new in the hood, he looked like the ideal person to mingle with. It was everyday flowers in my world. Certified morning calls, just to know how I'm doing. He would even show up at work from time to time just to take me home. Introductions to his family and friends from time to time again. His friends. (laughs) his friends those lying bastards they knew the hell I was getting myself into they knew that I wasn't the only one getting this special treatment and they just sat there watching me tie a rope around my neck They were stationed to push the stool so that I hang to death. It makes me question a lot. They knew about all of us. The handful of girls who all fell for the same trap. They knew us all. And as I'm thinking about those mongrels, I feel a certain pinch on my left arm. I look at it, and I notice a fresh deep scratch. In my mind, I'm trying to remember how I got it. And then of course, flashes come to my mind. You know, I invited his friends over for dinner last night. They love how I cook. 
I taught them he would come to join us and we picked um, one of his friend's houses as the venue. But of course I knew he wasn't going to come, duh. He was lying dead next to the woman he chose to cheat on me with. <laughs> now, I needed a plan. So to put the boys down, it took just a bit of some drugs in their drinks to keep them inactive and powerless. The multiple stabs that I put on the entire gang that claimed to be Xavier's close friends. It was a beautiful scene. And of course, I saved the closest for last. Steve. He's the one who who tried to hold my hand so that my sharp knife didn't penetrate his flesh. Of course, he scratched me in the process. But he wasn't able to save his bowels. Amongst them all, I detest him the most. He consoled me and promised to defend me. And all that time he knew that his loyalty belonged to Xavier and not me. If I were his younger sister, falling for such a hoe of a man, would he let me be? Would he have not intervened? (laughs) Because of him, my purity was taken and destroyed by a lame excuse of a man. My spirit was dirtified by the strains of countless other spirits. I went through hell watching endless lives of different women share a part of my life forever. And him? He took part in making it all seem okay. He consoled me and made me feel it was a phase. Other times he even declined knowing anything about it. But he did. (laughs) Oh yes, he did. He did because he was close friends with them all. But just because I'm the most loved didn't mean that I had to withhold the dirt. It didn't mean that I had to endure the pain. It was toxic. I already loved him too much. So I couldn't just walk away. I would always keep coming back. It was too late to move on. I would always just keep making myself the fool. But you know what? (laughs) My pride is worth more. I remember we promised each other the famous until death do us part well I guess death finally did now I will go to my baby I will live a stress free life I will be happy and my dear daughter will never have to find me crying alone in the bathroom again she will be the most jovial baby that will ever be and i will use the rest of my life to make her happy and be the mother and father that she never got to have i pick up my two plane tickets i drag my bag outside